almost anywhere you read about ellipsometry is going to tell you that it measures film thickness and NNK, the index of refraction. And it is very good at doing those things. The reality is that's basically just the beginning, though. With the right measurement setup and data analysis, ellipsometry can be that and a whole lot more. One of the most simple and honestly best applications of ellipsometry is mapping, which is basically used to measure the spatial uniformity of a sample. Now, the way a mapping measurement is carried out is actually really simple. A single ellipsometry measurement reflects a polarized beam off the surface of a sample, and we get information about the sample from where the beam hit it. To expand on this, we can move the sample around, each time collecting data from all of these new locations. And so what we end up with is data from a grid of locations all over the entire sample. And that's what the map is. So here's what this looks like in practice on our in-house ellipsometer, where we're measuring a thin film on a silicon wafer. The details of the mapping pattern can be entirely customized to the sample size and exactly what it is we're trying to learn about it. Examples of this are we can do quick maps over large areas just to try and get an idea of general uniformity, or we can zoom in on very small areas and do super high resolution maps and really anything in between. Now the beauty of the result here is that ellipsometry is sensitive to a whole variety of material properties. So as long as we can do the data analysis on the data that we collect with a model that's sensitive to any property that we want to measure, we can then use mapping to determine what the spatial uniformity of that property is over the entire sample. So what kind of examples of these are we talking about? Well, for starters, here's a really simple example where we're mapping the thickness of a layer on a full silicon wafer. Here's another one where we're mapping some surface contamination in super high resolution over a very small area, where in some cases there is contamination, in other cases there is not. Here's another one where we're measuring the optical band gap of a film, and that's the wavelength at which uh, the material starts absorbing light. And here we're able to determine what the changes are as a result of annealing the film. And I wrote a list of other material properties that we've mapped with ellipsometry in the past. Examples are index of refraction, interfacial diffusion, material composition, depth gradients, basic reflectance, density and porosity, monolayer coverage, and that's actually all I could remember off the top of my head. There are certainly other ones. And so the point here is that the applications are many. So if you'd like to learn more about some of these examples, we will have future videos where we go into the details of these different mapping applications.